Hello and welcome to Review Rant Random and the first entry of Godzilla. Yes, this one is in black and white because the original movie is. And here we are, amazing artwork. From 1954, this is Godzilla. Now, okay, I got that yesterday and I was over the moon to open it up. And if you watch me unboxing video of that box set, when I was scratching around in the corner and he got hit in the head, I actually found that about an hour later. <laughs> That's the original artwork, very common, known poster. We'll make a bitch in our steelbook, that. And uh, there's a really cool um, model out, um, which is obviously based off the original Godzilla and that. Um, it comes all like funky colours like it is on there, so some really cool Godzilla um, merchandise out in this world right now. Had that for absolutely ages. Right, um, what's happening? I've got a white t shirt on because this film, I mean, I'm a little bit more than black and white and obviously got the film grain on it's going to make my idea of rendering quite fun right so let's get talking about this movie it's a very serious movie it's a very serious subject and it's very i mean unlike when you think godzilla you think cities annihilated like big crazy monster and all that and this isn't you know it's for the better part of the start of it it's all a mysterious like oh what's that glowing in the water um and he harasses really an island now his appearance over the hill you know, it's quite cool. I love the the photo they are taking when it's like a drawn what they show on the projector and it's fucking awesome that. Uh -huh. It's not like uh Doctor Who with the terror terror zones when the Loch Ness monster peeks over the, the, the hill in very similar fashion. What looks like a potato stuck together with sticks and stuff. Ah yeah, it's over the front. Don't upset the Doctor Who fans. Um so yeah. I think it's great. I it's fucking brilliant to see the score in it, you know, from the score. The, the, I mean I am literally no doubt listening to that, you know. Had this on for the last couple of years. I know, look at that man. And uh the score, you know, it's lived on. Lived on. It's such iconic music. Totally got lost for a while, but ah oh, it's just a great march. Now, there's a lot of model work, there's a lot of miniature work, um, there's some weird stuff, especially like when the ambulances and the fire trucks go flying over and the models of people and like oh, but there's some great groundbreaking effects for when it was made and yes when it starts you think oh fuck this hasn't aged that well have they not given a bit more treatment but again it's like well you know it, you preserve in the movie oh yeah but then it's kind of like people go oh you can't remake it well with all the errors of cgi and especially what they did with jaws maybe they could just re you know completely re animated you know in a way like going back to doctor who like what they've done with the audio files and actually drawing what the episodes lost before BBC lost them and all that. Anyway, off that one. So Godzilla sort of appears um, each and every chapter. There's one of the chapters on it called the best actor in the world. I don't know what that's about. And um, he makes his appearance. He comes, like, creeps around. There's a lot of uh, matte paintings and stuff of where his trail was. Pops up in the water, hangs out for a bit. Then goes to town, takes out the clock takes on the train, eats the train, you know, good old Godzilla, taking Thomas the Tank to town, he'll just be like, choo choo choo, I'm gonna eat you, and you know, stuff like that. Um, and it, it goes well. Very serious though, very grounded. I mean, it's all been in Japanese, I've been in, um, currently working on Britney's uh, birthday video. So it's been hard to quite follow it, story-wise. I have been glancing over. I, I think it's visually stunning for how it was done, especially the black and white, because I love black and white. It's just people want colour. Um, it, it looked good. Story's hard to follow. The guy with the eye patch and the oxygen bomb, that obviously they re brought into King of Monsters recently as well. And the whole idea of him being a fish killer and he wants to take out. They're going to get Godzilla and the romance going on there. Then, you know, then it's just the debates and like I like the presentation of like oh this is what he could be you know he was oh fuck and at the end it goes a little bit quirky I think um, obviously this is the first and God never knew that we're going to have so many sequels including Godzilla 85 which I'll get to that which is a direct sequel to this movie in some form of Return of Godzilla is anyway but to see him fizzle like going down in the bubbles and you see a skeleton and it's like oh he's definitely dead there isn't he I mean he's not come back from that you've definitely fizzled him to bits like dropping a penny in some coca cola it's like, but yeah he came back anyway so I'm not going to cry over it the one that made us cry as a kid is Godzilla 85 it goes down a volcano it's brutal anyway off that rant 
Um, there's a lot of dissolves. There's a lot of dissolves in the same shot. This car goes by, dissolves, and another car goes by, and you think, mm, okay. And then the aeroplanes coming down. Some great miniature work. The suit looks great. And fucking bug eyes, though. Especially in the up close bits where he's like burning fires. Got fucking bug eyes. Like a Looney Tunes character. So it's like. I don't remember you having them kind of bug eyes, but he's got fucking big, big bug eyes. Um, but the animation was great. Um, so this came along decades after God's, uh, King Kong. So you know what I mean? The technology um, in the camera effects were there, but it's still a very grainy, beaten looking movie, but it's been preserved and restored by Criterion. Um, interesting thing there, just looking at the out, uh, the extras, and the the alternative cut is on here, the one with Raymond Blur and, and Steve Martin. But it's definitely not, well, it could be Steve Martin. It's definitely not Steve Martin, Steve Martin. But um, what we're gonna do is I wanna look at that and then I don't know, I don't know if it'll be an outtake or it'll be a completely separate video because it will be, I think it's called uh, Godzilla King of Monsters as this one was in Korea. But no, great to reminisce. It's been a while since I've seen it. I do have it on VHS and on um, VHS and DVD. I'll have to have the DVD out somewhere. Knocking around, but for now, I'll see you in the outtakes. Okay, the outtake is the other version of the movie, Godzilla King of Monsters, as it comes up. Let's try to put it back in the box. So, um, it's pretty weird, because, I mean, Godzilla 85, uh, Raymond Blair returns for it years later. And, um, I don't know what the next one is. Rain of Godzilla, Godzilla Raids again, so... Um, so this has been recut and re-edited. Raymond Blair talks a lot over the top of it. Raymond Blair is meant to be the news reporter. And uh, just like, as in like Batman versus Superman, where Batman's running around at the end of Man of Steel and stuff like that, you know, it's like a twist on it. So he has little and no reaction interaction with the established cast and stuff from there. Pirate Man, who is Patch Kazawa, still running around. He's still running around trying to, like, with his oxygen bomb. That story's still there. Um, there is a lot of new footage shot for this. The footage, the American shot as well, it looks really good. Um, you can tell it's like higher value, especially in film. And the chemicals involved, it just, it looks better. Uh, I've just bought this frame. Unboxed it, and then haven't framed anything when it's so random. Um, but now it's been on the background, obviously. So it's more about the, the destruction and the aftermath and... Um, Cuts out some of the main story, chucks in this backstory. Um, still looks great though. Um, the boggly eyes of Backman. Um, all the Godzilla footage is there. They've just made a story for the American market, really. So, you know, and he comes back rubbing his stone years later. And he's actually called Steve Martin. Steve Martin is not in the movie, sorry. But yeah, that was the first one. I really enjoyed it. Uh, as I say, Old school nostalgia being black and white, um, reign of destruction while Godzilla evolves. So, you know, we had it doesn't tell you the extra features on these discs, does it? So, um, in Japanese with English subtitles, it's often said the timing is everything, and it's eventually and certainly that true for the first film of the long run Godzilla series, which owns its existence. Kazawa. So yeah, Raymond Blur. We really popped on all of that artwork there. Yeah, he's smashing that bell tower. And his buggly eyes are on that one as well. I mean This is probably gonna be the YouTube video standing like this. But yeah, um as I said, follow the story, it's about the fall of the aftermath of the destruction. Um Yeah. It's like Bella Lagosi. And then the alternative cut of the movie. Just commercializing on it. You know, it's quite cool. It's quite cool. But yeah, um, might get another one watch tonight. Might not. It's quite a lot. You know, coming off the Friday the 13th. Just finished out and then. 
I thought it was going to do Tremors podcast and stuff, and nope, it's going to be 15 Godzilla movies, and probably 16, because i got to watch that again, on VHS, of course. Right, see you next time. And now, the end is here.